Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I'm sitting here um, checking my volume. Okay, we're good. Now, before we get started, there's a reason you're watching a cat video. I am still in, in exile from uh, the X platform. They turned me off for no reason, no warning, no nothing. After five years of building a presence, they just said, oh, okay, you're turned off. We're not going to tell you why. It's just is what it is. And then you can you can reply to our customer service emails back and forth. You can provide your identity, you can provide everything, but it may take us whatever time. So anyway, but that's not the worst of it. I'll tell you the worst of it. And it's nothing against cats. I like cats and dogs like everybody. But they in my feed, it's in read only mode. But the second that they turned me off, they began to torture me with cat videos. I don't know why, but for some reason the whole feed is populated with cat videos. So I am going nuts here watching cat videos while I'm trying to find information to give you. Just wanted to let you know what I was going through. Ugh. Jim Cramer seems to think that Bitcoin is about to go down big. Watch this. I just can't get on the... I can't be in something where Mr. Bitcoin is about to go down big. I just can't. Now, every time I hear this out of this guy, it makes me, I'm thinking, oh man, I mean, I might need to go buy some Bitcoin. This guy is like, I've never seen anyone who is, is so as openly about manipulation of the markets as that guy is. Oh, and by the way, wait till you see, what, wait till you members see what I'm going to show you today. I've been, this is, I'm like, uh, it's like I've been freed. Now all of a sudden I can talk about things on this, or not on the channel, but in the private group, things I have not been able to talk about in all the five years I've been doing this, but now free at last. Um, check this out. Caroline Ellison from, she's the, was the CEO of Alameda and I use CEO, the CEO, I think it was CEO. I use that term extremely loosely. These are a couple, few morons running this. Listen, here's, here she is entering the courthouse on the FTX thing. Now she's getting her jail, out, maybe not get out of jail free card, but she's, she um, ha, was the first to squeal. So she got the deal and she's going after her old buddy, Sam, or boyfriend, Sam Bankman freed. And here's kind of a summary of what was going on. We know that Caroline Ellison, who has been a pivotal witness, both for the sake of the prosecution, as well as someone who's come up in the sake of the defense, she has come up and immediately said, yes, we did commit crimes, Sam and I and others. And she said that Sam Bankman fried directed her as the CEO of Alameda to commit those crimes. She said, we ultimately took around $14 billion, some of which we were able to pay back. She said that Alameda took several billion dollars from FTX customers and used it for its own investments and to pay off lenders. Now, remember, we expect some critical evidence to be coming up in the sake of her testimony, particularly from the prosecution. Things like her personal diaries that described her state of mind and relationship to Sam Bankman Freed, who was uh, her on and off, uh, on again, off again boyfriend throughout a period of time, who she met back at her time at Jane Street. Uh, and also, we expect that there will be a recording from a November meeting when FTX was facing serious dire straits. Now, only 10 minutes of testimony had started afternoon. They are on a break, as you're saying. We expect this to go on now for more hours. All right. So they've decided to throw him overboard. Um, he, this guy had summarized, like, I think he like typed out all the questions, basically. Um, why did you break up? Ellison, he wasn't spending much time with me. Was it a secret at first? Then he told me I could say we were living together, but no more. What was your salary? She was making $200,000 a year. Then she had a bonus of, get this, $20 million in 2021. 
These are kids, folks. Anybody that was anywhere close to the money could have seen that this was something was not right. John Deaton is point Ron Hamilton Hammond, who's a lobbyist um, in D.C., did a whole thread here on the state of things in Congress, and and John says excellent thread explaining the substantive ways. What, what I've maintained for the last year. We will not see meaningful legislation until the second half of 2025. We will be forced to continue to fight the SEC, CFTC, Fed, etc. In fact, Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler will not allow the truth to get in their way and will use terrorism, the war, as a way to further attack crypto. I hate to sound like Debbie Downer, and I would love to be proven wrong and eat my words, which I will, glad, will gladly Ron or anyone else doing great work on the Hill should feel free to say I'm being too pessimistic. But look, folks, bottom line, XRP is the only digital asset with legal clarity. And it's going to be that way for quite a while, folks, is what it, is what it looks like here. Um, here's Eric Van Miltenberg. I'm not going to play the whole video, but here's 27 seconds. He's, he is, um, what's his title, Ripple? Uh, Chief Business Officer at Ripple. Watch this. Um, I think there's still a long way to go in the U.S. in terms of providing regulatory clarity. But frankly, Ripple's business has been thriving um, regardless. Uh, in some ways, we've been operating, um, you know, even as if we lost the suit, which, of course, we didn't. Um, and outside of the U.S., uh, in regions like Asia Pacific, in the Middle East, in, in the EU, in the UK, uh, you know, we continue to press our, our, our advantage and move forward. Okay. Um, then we've got this news coming in hot. New Development Bank officially announced a three-year plan to completely end reliance on the U.S. dollar. The three-year de-dollarization initiative will lead to BRICS settling trade in local currencies and not the U.S. dollar. Major announcement at Cybos. Listen to this. Actually, two other points, but the last one is, in an, as an FMI, we need central bank digital currency. So today, an FMI settles in central bank money for good reasons, to make sure that we uh, reduce risks and counterparty risk and have a, a, a bankruptcy pre a remote assets for settlement. Uh, and uh, we don't have that today. So in our case, we're using tokenized Swiss franc and tokenized euro, which is things that we create based on cash that hits our account at the Swiss National Bank, and then we tokenize SDX. So there's an exposure to us. The good news there, in Switzerland at least, is that we will be starting with real-life transactions in CBDC by the end of the year, meaning that the Swiss National Bank will be the entity deploying Swiss franc in tokenized form, so CBDC, on our infrastructure for settlement. So that's uh, a barrier that is lifted. It's going to be a, uh, a six-month trial to start with, but it's, it's promising, and I think other central banks are looking at that, and I think it's really important, at least for FMIs, uh, to, to play. And the last one is mindset. I think this is such a paradigm shift that it's, it's very difficult to, for most people in our industry to comprehend what I've just explained in my first response, the, 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 the potential of that technology. Because we're so used to what we do today that we sometimes tend to uh, not be open or able to, to look at what the potential could be in a very open-minded way. And I think that's also uh, something that will be changed through education. Through All right. Um, then we've got this from Eleanor Terrett. Reminder, the SEC has until Friday to appeal court decision made in grayscale. Agency's been stacking losses when it comes to crypto lit litigation. Do you think the SEC will appeal? I think they'll keep dragging things out. Wheezy, uh, I don't think this goes over the line as far as what I can show. This is just Charles Hoskinson saying something. Uh, listen to what he says here. He, uh, he obviously doesn't want this to go any further. Yeah, there's certainly value getting the emails, the Hitman emails and these other things because they perhaps expose the thought process that the SEC has. And you can definitely show there was unequal, unequal application of that. That's fine. But none of that activity presupposes corruption, just favoritism. Okay, then now uh, here we're about to we are about to enter the danger zone, and one of the things I'm going to tell you some of the things that I'm going to talk about in the private group today. That some of these I've been sitting on for for a while because I couldn't talk about them. So I mean, I, I just could, I, now I know I can't go there on on regular social media, but some of these I was just didn't think I should talk about. One of the one of the things I'm I'm going to talk about is what Joseph Lubin says here. I believe that Joseph Lubin in this video that I played last week, um, I believe he says something 
where he's sending a message. Now, who he's sending it to, we'll talk about that. I'm not really sure, but I think he's sending a message, and I think it's in response to the Stephen Narioff stuff. I'm also going to cover some Stephen Narioff stuff. Some of these things are like crazy going on. Um, I'm also going to tell you what I don't think I ever, I may have, but I don't think I ever did um, what a, a DC lobbyist told me on the phone one time. This is kind of wild. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the island guy, but we, we refer to him by his name in, in the group. And then I'm going to tell you what somebody said to me who was one of the, oh, I won't say his name, but he was one of the first people. Um, let me see how I want to say this. He was one of the first people at, uh, actually, he's one of the first people involved in Bitcoin and all of this, Mt. Gox, all of this, okay? Um, so yes, now we're entering the danger zone. For those of you that are not a member, this is what we do in there. We talk about, we censor, it's censorship free in there. We leave the crypto police behind. Um, and if they come in, they come in to observe only. They're not allowed to uh, tell us we can and can't talk about things. If you go to DAIXRP.com, I intentionally made this thing very inexpensive. It's, it's only six bucks a month because I've seen people charging crazy amounts of money, hundred dollars, that kind of stuff. Uh, not me. So anyway, it's only, it's, we're, I'm going to, every day I'm going to provide you something that I'm not doing on the regular YouTube channel or things that I can't provide on the YouTube channel. And the reason I did this is 100% in response to me getting kicked off X. I'm not going to let, I'm, I'm tired of being at the behest of a bunch of social media big brother people. I'm not doing it. I, I, as long as, as I'm able to, to post publicly on those things, I'll do it. But I am, I'm setting up my island in exile. And maybe we'll start serving margaritas. Well, that's actually a... Um, that's actually not going to happen. Um, so now we're going into the private group. So the rest of you, come on, join us. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that in the private group, you got 33 minutes of content instead of, what, 10 or 12 or so? Thanks for listening.